Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman and welcome to this review of the DC60 from Harley Benton. I think I am correct in saying that in my <clears throat> 15 years on YouTube, this might be the cheapest guitar I've ever reviewed. <laughs> it's under 200 euros. I think it's 195 euros. Um, obviously shipping to wherever you live will vary that price up and down a little tiny bit. But it's unbelievably cheap. And it's got a lot of really cool bells and whistles to talk about. Now, although it is a affordable guitar, I kind of felt like it deserved to feel like it was a high-end, you know, aspirational piece of gear. And as a result, I'm sticking it through a Bad Cat Hot Cat, possibly one of the greatest amps of all time and space. So, you know, don't feel like your, your, your price is an indicator of your value, because <laughs> it's not. So, DC60 from Harley Benton. As you can see, it is in this beautiful faded cherry red. Yep, we can all see what this is a tip of the hat to. You know, it's kind of giving the double cut classic uh, style from, from G, the G range. <laughs> It does it really well. I mean, it looks very, very, very similar. As you can see, the construction is the same. It's a, you know, it's got bits of stuff on the back, but it's a set neck. It is, um, you know, made of mahogany. Um, the one exception to this mahogany, uh, and then normally you'd see rosewood here, is that this is amaranth. Amaranth. I've only ever heard amaranth before, uh, the track of a tune by uh, a really cool metal band I like. People who now know this band will be commenting it in the comment section below. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Amaranth, Mahogany, it's simplicity. It has a bridge by Wilkinson. We all know that Wilkinson make really, really good bridges. So that gives you a little bit of sort of security. Each of the individual saddles can be intonated, which is definitely an upgrade to the original uh, Junior. I used to own a 1960s Junior. It sounded absolutely incredible, but intonation was a problem, especially when I put, you know, 10 to 56 gauge paradigms on it. It really, it really didn't want it to, to be, to be honest. It wasn't very happy with that being the situation. Um, I like the shape of the scratch plate. It's kind of innovative. I think it's cool. Um, and yeah, we better see how it sounds. I mean, so far so good, it feels really good. The fretwork is immaculate, all the way down to the dusty end. There's not a single sharp bit in sight. It looks beautiful. It's got a volume, it's got a tone. We'll talk about this in a minute because it's kind of interesting. It's got 22 frets, might have your name on it. <laughs> Let's see what the, the hot cat says. <laughs> Something that I really like about this guitar is that when you're playing it, the whole neck resonates. You can feel it in the palm of your hand. The whole thing is kind of alive with vibrations and that's normally a, a good measuring stick of whether a guitar is effectively sending its vibrations throughout, resonating, sustaining. You know, often, if I'm looking to buy a guitar, I will suspend it and I'll, I'll tap it and I'll see if you get different notes from the neck to the body, I'm not even kidding, and I know I'm going to get trolled for saying that, but you, you'll, what you really want is the guitar where the neck and the body make a harmonious intervallic, not something dissonant and cancelling itself out. Try it out at some point. If you've got a guitar that you like, that has great sustain and tone and, and feel, have a little tap of the neck and the body, see what you find.
it is quick to make friends with you. It kind of, at first, the string tension felt a little bit tough, and now it seems to be warming up and it kind of feels friendly and at home. I'm enjoying playing with the tone knob to, in effect, create that second pickup. Obviously, it doesn't exist, but you can kind of. Let's give it some more game. <laughs> Why not? After all, it is a Hot Cat 30. It is a Thursday, I think. I'm not even sure what dead is, to be honest with you. I've been stuck in my house for a month. <laughs> I really like this pickup. <clears throat> it is a dog ear Roswell, which is Harley Benton's own brand of pickups. Uh, Alnico 5 P90. That's a lot of different things to say. Dog ear, Alnico 5, P90, Roswell, P90. Uh, it's great because, I mean, I love P90s. I think they're kind of the underdog of the pickup world because you can back them off and get nice crispy cleans but you can bring them in and it really surprise, well, it kind of shocks people how good they sound with high gain. I've used P90s for ages because with Chapman guitars, I bought out P90 loaded semi-hollow ML3 and it wasn't ever supposed to do high gain stuff, but of course I did and I was like, wait a minute, this sounds really good. Why does no one else do high gain P90 stuff? And uh, I think Brethren are waking up to that tings because now I see quite a lot of it. And then I realized, I mean, a P90 is kind of a fat single coil to an extent. Loads of people play high, high gain stuff with single coils. Of course, it's going to work. And more often than not, that brightness is what you need when you're using gain. You don't want a fudgy, thick humbucker. Sometimes you want that articulate kind of clear cutting single coil tone, you know, which has been proven time and time again to work. So anyway, I really like it. It's hella cheap. <laughs> it is absolutely a contender uh, if you were interested in this style of guitar and you wanted it for hardly any money at all. Go check it out, Harley Benton DC60. By the way, in case you care about these kinds of things, it is made in Indonesia which seems to be the planet's guitar factory right now. Take it easy, Evan Chappers, Chappers out. <laughs>